Hello everyone, I'm Ante Jerek from University of Zagreb, Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Computing. I'm going to be presenting our paper titled Mechanized Formal Model of Bitcoin's Blockchain Validation Procedures. The bulk of this work was performed by my colleagues, Christian Rupic, who is a master's student at the same institution, and Lovra Rožić, who is a former PhD student at the same institution, currently at Max Planck Institute for Software Systems. So let's get started. In this paper, we formally model and verify some aspects of the Bitcoin blockchain system. Bitcoin doesn't need a long introduction at this venue. It's by far the most popular cryptocurrency blockchain. It's open sourced. It's, uh, it's designed, developed, fixed, updated in the public eye. It's also mission critical. Bugs can literally cost people billions. And that makes it a great target for formal verification. Our focus here is the fundamental data structures of the system, namely transaction and blocks, along with their validation logic. And historically, a number of interesting problems have been discovered in this area, both uh, implementation bugs and design issues. And just to give you a few examples, uh, first, there was this interesting problems with transaction IDs. In Bitcoin, it was assumed that transaction IDs would always be unique. But this turned out uh, not to be the case. So transaction ID is just a hash of the serialized transaction data. And it turns out that you can build coin-based transactions that have exactly the same transaction data and therefore exactly the same hash. Essentially, in case of a coin-based transaction, the, the data inside is uh, the miner address, the total reward, including fees, and the metadata that's arbitrarily chosen by the miner. And, and clearly, you can choose those to be identical, and therefore, you can build uh, two identical coin-based transactions and add them to the two different blocks, leading to this undesirable situation that inside the same blockchain, you have two different transactions with the same ID. And this did, in fact, happen in the, in the real world in 2010, and now there are two uh, transactions with the same ID in the main Bitcoin blockchain. The official Bitcoin client was hacked to deal with this uh, new reality and the design flaw was uh, ultimately fixed by requiring that the coin based transaction includes the block height information so now the the coin based transaction id depends on the block height and since there can only be one coin based transaction inside each block uh, all of the coin based transaction that are inside the same blockchain have to be different and therefore have to have uh, different identifiers. As an example of an implementation bug, uh, a series of changes to the official Bitcoin client made double spending possible for a significant period of time in 2018. The particular issue has to do with checking that you don't spend the same coin twice inside the same transaction. I'm simplifying the story a little bit, uh, but basically what happened was that at some point in 2016, this check was performed twice. First in the context independent transaction validity checks, and then later when the transaction was actually being processed and added to a block. And I guess you can guess the rest. First, one developer uh, turned off one check, thinking it was redundant for the purpose of performance optimization and then at some later point in 2018 another developer was refactoring the the second piece of code uh, and removed the other check resulting in 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 this very very undesirable uh, situation and a very serious bug the goal of this research is to provide formal models for basic data structures of the bitcoin system use those formal models to specify and, and analyze and ultimately provide machine verified proofs for critical properties of those data structures. And in particular, we'd like to show that there's no issues like the two issues that we just described. Formal verification of blockchain systems has been a very active area of research in recent years, but most research efforts have been focused either on the consensus mechanisms or on the smart contracts. For example, there are many efforts to model and verify consensus protocols for various block blockchain systems, Bitcoin, Ethereum, both the current proof of work and the new proposed proof of stake, Tendermint and others. 
In the Bitcoin uh, world, an interesting example is the toy chain system by Perlea and Sergey. They use a clock proof assistant to build a Bitcoin like consensus protocol. They can prove various properties of that protocol, but uh, interestingly, they can also extract uh, code and run an actual verified consensus node. Smart contract modeling and verification has also received lots of attention, especially in the Ethereum world, the Ethereum virtual machine and the related languages for smart contracts. In the Bitcoin uh, world, Klomp and Bracciali and also Atze and others build models to analyze and, and verify various properties of Bitcoin scripts. In contrast to consensus and smart contracts, there is much less published work when it comes to basic uh, data structures of a, a system such as Bitcoin. One notable exception is the pen and paper formal model of Bitcoin blocks and transaction transactions by Atze and others. We consider that work to be uh, the state of the art prior to our research, so we use it as a reference point for benchmarking our contributions. So our contributions are as follows. We propose a first mechanized model for basic data structures, data structures of the Bitcoin system, transactions, blocks, and blockchains. Uh, this model is, of course, still simplified compared to the real uh, client, but this, it still includes many important details, uh, multi-signature, segregated witnesses, lock times, transaction fees, and so on. We define validity checks that are performed by clients when adding new blocks to the blockchain. We then define a blockchain to be valid if all of those validity checks are satisfied, and we prove known desired properties of a valid blockchain. We show that there's no double spending in a valid blockchain. We show that all transactions are unique, and we show that new value can only be added to, to through block rewards. Value of all unspent coins is exactly equal to the value of all block, block rewards. All of these results are, are mechanized using the clock proof assistant. And finally, uh, I want to compare our results to uh, the previous work that I just mentioned. Compared to the pen, pen and paper model of Atze and others, we have more complete treatment of blocks where transactions are really grouped into blocks with exactly one coin-based transaction. With blocks, we are able to model uh, rewards, fees, uh, and finally, in many uh, details, we are closer to the official client. Before going into technical details of the model, let's briefly discuss some design choices and how our model is different from the real thing. First of all, uh, we use symbolic cryptography. That's, uh, let's say, a standard simplifying assumption. For us, hash, uh, hashing is going to be just an identity function. And by that trick, we, we greatly simplify uh, referencing inside the blockchain. We also use uh, dollar Yao signatures. Basically, a signature is going to verify on a particular message using a particular public key only if the signature was explicitly constructed using the corresponding private key and exactly the same message. Uh, additionally, we use typing in many places where data is untyped uh, in the original Bitcoin client. For example, stack values are just uh, random sequences of bytes. In Bitcoin, we use uh, dynamically typed values in our scripts. Another example is a coin-based coin -based transaction, which is implicit in Bitcoin. So a transaction is a coin-based transaction if it only has one input and that input is, is basically a hash pointer consisting of only zero bytes. For us, we're going to have an explicit Coinbase transaction. We omit many details from the Bitcoin client that we didn't consider to be crucial when it comes to verifying desired properties. In particular, uh, we're not interested in proof of work, so we omit the, the related fields from the transactions. We don't keep track of protocol versions. We don't have Merkle trees uh, and so on. Also, we simplify the, the internals. Of course, our internals are not uh, same as Bitcoin internals. In particular, we define this data structure called TX history, 
that contains a list of all transactions in a blockchain ordered sequentially from the beginning, from the Genesis block to the current block. And there's no such, there's no corresponding team, thing inside Bitcoin. Of course, the client is optimized for, for performance, so they keep track of spend and not spend coins, not in a list, but in a, in a hash map, basically. Also, we only support uh, one kind of transaction. So currently, Bitcoin supports legacy transactions where the, the witnesses are inside the, the references to outputs and so-called segregated weakness transactions where witnesses are stored separately from uh, transaction stubs and we only support this the second case if you look at the current bitcoin network about 60 percent of transactions are, are segway transactions so that was the primary primary use case that we wanted to cover at this point now i want to describe some aspects of our model without going into too many technical details uh, these here are our basic data structures, transactions, transaction stubs, scripts, expressions, and stack values. And all of these are defined as uh, inductive types. Transactions contain transaction stubs and also uh, a list of witnesses. So a one witness per input field. And then transaction stubs themselves contain a, a list of inputs. Those are references to coins being spent along with relative lock times, list of outputs. These are the new coins being created uh, and the absolute lock, that, uh, lock time. So that's the regular transaction case. However, transaction stub uh, can also be a coin based stub. And in that case, it just contains the block height and the list and the list of outputs. Uh, as mentioned, our hash function is just the identity. So transaction stubs do not refer to other transaction stubs by hash pointers. Uh, they contain them directly itself. So TX stub contains other uh, TX stubs directly. Uh, I'm not going to go into details of these, these other data structures, uh, but I will emphasize that this is a, a mutually inductive constructions. So TX stubs contain uh, script expressions uh, because in outputs you have to specify uh, the, the spending script and then uh, script expression uh, contains stack values and st then stack values through signatures again contain uh, transaction stubs. So it's a mutually inductive construction. Now we use these basic data structures uh, and build validation logic for, for transactions and blocks on top of them. First, we define the notational semantics for script expression. So given a spending script and given a, a witness, which is that just a list of stack values, we can evaluate the, the script with a given witness and figure out if it verifies properly or not. And then when we have that definition, then we proceed to define coin redemption in the following way. We say that the jth input of transaction T2 redeems the ith output of transaction T1. Well, first of all, if it refers uh, to exactly that output inside the input. And then secondly, if the relative and absolute time lock rules are satisfied, I'm not going to go into details on those. And finally, if the spending rules are, are respected. So if we take the corresponding witness and we find the corresponding witness by looking at the J field uh, in the list of witnesses in the transaction next to the transaction stub and take the spending script from uh, the output, we evaluate the denotational semantics for the given script and the given witness. And if that thing verifies, then we say that uh, one, when, then we say again that uh, the jth input of transaction T2 redeems the ith output of transaction T1. Now we build this auxiliary data structure called the transaction history. Transaction history is a list of pairs, transaction and a timestamp. And ultimately for a given blockchain, it will contain all the transaction in transactions in the blockchain ordered uh, in, in the same order they were processed. And so block by block and uh, respecting the order of transaction within the same block. And these, these timestamps are going to correspond to block timestamps. 
So if a transaction was contained in a block with timestamp T, then it would uh, then it would appear with that timestamp in this transaction history data structure. Along with the transaction history data structure, we will define associated lists of spent and unspent outputs together with uh, methods for maintaining those lists. And we're going to define what it means for a transaction history to be valid. And of course, this definition is going to be inductive. Transaction history is valid if it's either empty or it's obtained from a valid transaction history by a valid update. To define what updates to transaction history are valid, we consider two cases. If the transaction is a coin-based transaction, then we just require that the time is non-decreasing and that the transaction contains proper coin-based height. It should be one greater than uh, the total number of coin-based transactions currently in the, in the transaction history. And in the second case, in the case of a uh, regular transaction, uh, we again require uh, the trivial check that the time is non-decreasing, but then we also do a, a number of other important checks. We have to check that the value is non-increasing, so the sum of values of all outputs has to be uh, a, less than the sum of less than or equal to the sum of value of all inputs we have to uh, ensure that the list of inputs is not empty we have to ensure that there are no duplicate inputs and we have to uh, uh, ensure that every input redeems some output that is previously unspent then we proceed to define blocks and blockchains along with their validity checks so block is just a link, list of uh, transaction stubs along with a list of uh, witnesses and a timestamp. And blockchain is a, a linked list of blocks. Again, blockchain validity is going to be defined inductively. Uh, a blockchain is valid if it was built by valid updates. And to define the validity of an update, we first consider context independent checks. So we have to make sure that the first transaction of the block is the coin-based transaction and that's the only uh, coin-based transaction inside the block. And we also have to make sure that the, the minor reward checks out. So the coin-based value, the total uh, value of all outputs in the coin-based transaction should be exactly equal to the defined block reward uh, plus the transaction fees. Additionally, we have to perform context-dependent checks and they, they, they are composed of two parts. The simple part is we have to make sure that the coin, coin base has the correct uh, block height, which is, which is trivial. But more importantly, we have to extend our transaction history data structure with new transaction and make sure that it's always valid. So basically for an existing blockchain, we're gonna have a corresponding transaction history uh, data structure. And then we are quote unquote applying transactions from the new block one by one. And we apply a transaction by basically building a transaction out of a transaction stub. So we're gonna take the transaction stub from the block and figure out where the associated witnesses are in the witness segment. We're gonna pair them to build a transaction and we're gonna add that new transaction to the existing transaction history. And if that's not a valid transaction history update, then this is not a valid blockchain update. On the other hand, if we are able to apply all the transactions one by one and in every step get a valid transaction history, then the entire update is a valid blockchain update. Now I'm gonna go over the main results. Uh, needless to say, we had to define many more uh, helper data structures we had to prove uh, uh, various helper lemmas and theorems but i'm just going to quickly go over the main result so first a uh, theorem that we prove in a, in a machine verified fashion is a no double spending theorem what we prove is that if we take a valid blockchain according to our definition and we look at its transaction history then there are no there is no double spending in that transaction history first of all no transaction in transaction history spends the same coin in its inputs. And additionally, if we look at two different transactions, T1 and 2, and we look at their inputs, uh, they never spend the same coin. 
The second result is transaction uniqueness. And this is an example where you have to be very careful in, in stating exactly what you're proving. So what we show is the following. If we uh, take a valid blockchain B and we look at its transaction history, so all the transaction it contains, then if we look at all the stubs, all the transaction stubs inside that history, all of them are different. And it's important that we look at transaction stubs and not the transaction and recall transaction is a pair of transaction stub and, and witness and a list of witnesses because it, it, transaction stubs are the items that get hashed and that are used to generate transaction IDs. So we show that transaction stubs are unique and therefore transaction IDs are unique in a valid blockchain. And the final results has to do with, with accounting for uh, currency. And it says that in a valid blockchain, block rewards all, are the only means of creating new value. Basically, if we look at all the outputs that are spent and if we sum their values, the result has to be exactly equal to the sum of all uh, block rewards in the blockchain. Our formal model is available as a COG development online. It's an open source project. Uh, just a brief st statistical information. It's a little less than 1,000 lines of uh, specification and, and 2,500 lines of proof, and it has uh, no external dependencies. In conclusion, we propose the first mechanized formal model for blockchain validation logic in Bitcoin. We use this model to prove three known desired properties, thereby demonstrating the utility of the model. And in future work, we mostly want to focus on bringing the model closer to the actual Bitcoin client. And it is our feeling that backwards compatible implementations are the most significant challenge there. Features like segregated witness, where in order to be compatible, you have to support both legacy transactions and the new transactions. And implementation is done uh, in a way that results in a soft fork. So clients have to be backward compatible. So the new features have to be quote unquote hacked in to the client. That seems to us to be uh, the biggest obstacles, obstacle. And if you have ideas on how to overcome issues like that, please talk to us. Thank you for your attention.